The remaining question mark is who will avoid the West play in? That's between Denver and Minnesota. But the biggest news, arguably, was which team won't be in the playoffs at all this year with a win by the Spurs, the Lakers. We know it by now. They needed to win in Phoenix to avoid elimination. Guess what? They didn't. All right, joined alongside <laughs> Matt Barnes and Ramona Shelburne. Big perk. It's been a long season to get here. Let's just <laughs> let's just get this over with. All right, let's just let's just do it. Let's look. Let's see how it actually went down. Lakers, they were without LeBron James, still out with that ankle injury. Devin Booker, he didn't care. He's like, I can get this done. Jay Crowder lobs it up to Devin Booker, who finishes with the slam. He is not just a shooter. And then again, Devin Booker, this time with the assist to can, Mikhail Bridges. He can, he can do it all. He's high flying now. He's out there passing everyone like Everyone on the Suns played last night. There was no resting. There is no resting. Even at this point in the season, they wanted to set that franchise record. Chris Paul lobs it up. Yeah. I mean, what do they say? Is that the value oop at this point? Mm. They Chris got Paul. A bone to, they got a bone to pick this year, and they're showing that. Absolutely. Let's go ahead to the third quarter, because this is when the wheels started to fall off. Devin Booker. Oh. Oh. Lobs it up. It's beautiful. Nothing Look at this. Ball movement. Nothing beats ball movement. And they put on a clinic of ball movement last night. The Lakers, they turn it over. Aww. At this point, it's just sloppy. Devin Booker full ahead. As expected. Woo! Hey, they, and they hey, said, hey. yes, 121-110. Hey, Sorry, Lakers. That is the end. So the Suns, they set their franchise win record with three games still to go for the third time in franchise history. They'll enter the playoffs with the number one seed both prior instances after 62 win seasons in 93 and 05. They also rostered that season's MVP. So here's Devin Booker after the win. Did you relish? A little bit extra, the outcome tonight? Of course. I mean, that's the type of person I am, though. Um, you know, what do you call it? Bullet, bullet board material? You know, our team feeds on that. Um, but, you know, that wasn't our main focus. You know, a franchise record was more important to us. They just happened to be in the way. I keep telling you, that's how life go. You know what I'm saying? What goes around comes around. That's how it is. And it was Phoenix term to come around. Extremely disappointed. You know, um, disappointed for our fan base, disappointed for the bus family. You know, gave us all the, this opportunity, and you know we want to uh, play our part in, in bringing success to, to Laker basketball. And um, you know, we uh, we fell short. It's obviously disappointing on many levels, but ain't much you can do about it at this point. I almost wore the same outfit as DeAndre Ayton to the show today, <laughs> but I let him borrow my chain. It's fine. All right, Perk, let's start with you because I, I don't want to put you on blast here, but in the preseason, you said this Lakers team could win 70 games. Could win 70 oh, games. Uh, Obviously, that didn't happen. The tape? Oh. So how are we going to remember this Lakers season, Perk? <laughs> you, you know what? For us super teams, because that's what the Lakers were supposed to be this year, that's what the Lakers are when they acquired Russell Westbrook, they're going to be the biggest bust in NBA history. Mm. And here's why. For the simple fact that it's not that they got to the playoffs and didn't reach the finals or didn't win the championship. It's not the fact that they didn't even get into the playoffs. It's the fact that they even had another opportunity to get into the play-in tournament to actually give themselves a chance to get in the playoffs, and they failed at that. Look, when you have that many Hall, this many Hall of Famers on your team, you have zero excuses to be 17 games under 500. I don't care what no one says. So when when the Fords with the Lakers this season in 2022, they will go down as the biggest bust for as super teams in NBA history. Mm. Because you cannot, I repeat, you cannot miss the playoffs and be 17 games under 500. I don't care what no one says. Mm. I agree, Perk. Uh, I don't know if I want to say in history. I got. I, I didn't do enough research for that, but I definitely will say in Lakers history. You know, to start the season with five or six, arguably. Hall of Famers, and to end up here, 17 games under 500. And I don't think it t LeBron's legacy takes a hit. I think his leadership takes a hit here. And, and, and when I say that is, he's always done mm. so much for every franchise he's gone to. He's put him on his back. He's done his thing and been able to make, you know, wine out of grapes, however you want to look at it. But this season, I mean, individually, he had a great personal season. But I feel like where he lacked personally was – keeping these guys on point. It was disgusting, some of the stuff we had to watch this year from a pure effort and energy standpoint. And when you look at that, you look at someone like a possibly Kobe Bryant when 
I've seen him personally get in people's face and just cuss them out to their damn near in tears mm -hmm. and they're grown men. You know Michael Jordan probably would have been fighting his teammates if he had to see some of the stuff that these guys do. So I feel like what makes LeBron great, he's always been knocked, oh, he's not a killer. He'll make the right pass, and I've always loved that. But I also think sometimes that hurts him because, not saying I've never had him as a leader, and I'm sure he has his ways of particularly leading this team, but I know for a fact if, 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 if the two of the guys that I mentioned before saw some of the effort and energy that he saw from his teammates this year, it would have been an issue. I mean, when Kobe, Dwight, and Nash all had injuries, though, they didn't win a playoff game. They got neither to the did, playoffs, but, though. But they didn't win a game. Neither did this Lakers team. The year 19, when he was averaging 22 on 37% shooting, Kobe did. The Lakers, they went 10 and 25 in the games that he played in. So I, I, I'm not sure it's I, – I understand what you're saying, Matt, but I'm not so, so sure it's say, well, Kobe Bryant would have been the white horse to fix this. No, I'm, this, not, I'm definitely this, not Ramona. saying that, but what I'm saying is Kobe would get in – like, he would not let the sure, win some of his teammates Sure, but if you get in someone's face and it doesn't slide. turn into wins, then you're just getting in somebody. Face. But it's going to be a problem the entire season. And it just didn't seem like at some point it just seemed like everyone's just like, oh, well, forget it. It is what it is. And I just know, like I said, this is not even a not. What LeBron has been able to do this season alone has been absolutely incredible. He continues to climb yeah. the historical ladder. But I'm just saying from a standpoint of just not having what he saw on, on, on a day in, day out basis sometimes, those guys wouldn't have had it like that. Yeah. Laura, I mean, how are you going to reflect on look, this? Look, I mean, to me, this was a team that was put together as the, with this idea that the Laker championship teams of the past usually have two dominant players as their core and they surround them with different role players every every year. Um, they added another star to this group. And so we see the two teams that were picked as the co-favorites, the Brooklyn Nets and the Los Angeles Lakers mm. coming into this season. I, I'm starting to think that maybe that is not the model anymore in the NBA and how to build a championship team. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.